I know you paralyzed for some parallax. Hey, Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you need from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today, I'm bringing you the parallax effect using Power Director. Now, I know a few people have requested this effect, and if you're one of those people that have been waiting to see this effect for a pretty long time, I want you to leave a comment with the hashtag parallax me in the comment section below. All right, people, you've waited long enough. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 17. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the parallax effect. Now, before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. Let's get parallaxed. The parallax effect is achieved by moving the background image at a slower rate or in a different direction as the foreground. This creates an illusion of depth and it gives sort of a 3D feel to everything. Now, as you can see, I have a JPEG image on a timeline of some beautiful clouds and serene mountains off in the distance. Feel the love. Feel the calming love of the image. What I need to do is change this into two images by separating the background and the foreground. Once I have the two images, I can layer one on top of the other and create the movement. So. I'm going to left click on the image. I'm going to select Fix Enhance. And next, I'm going to open up Photo Director. If you don't have Photo Director, you can use other photo editors that can separate the background and the foreground. If you don't have Photo Director and you're interested in picking it up, I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the video description. Next, we want to make sure that we're on the edit tab and we'll go down and we'll select content aware removal. This tool is going to be used to create the background image. Now we want to make sure that the manual tab is selected and we want to make sure that we are using the eraser. Now we'll go ahead and select the part of the image we want to remove and I'm going to remove the mountains and the land in front of the mountains. So I'll just go ahead and hold down my left mouse and move it gently across this part of the image. I think that's pretty good there. Now I want to make sure that all of this is selected so I can go here. I can change the size of the brush, make it bigger, and that way I can just kind of knock out all the rest of this really quick. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to click on apply. Now I'm good with this, looks pretty good, but if you didn't like it for some reason, you can click on retry and you can do it all over again. Now I'm gonna click on back to send the image back to Power Director. And I'm gonna click on yes to confirm that I want to save the edits to this image. And it's gonna bring it back into Power Director and you can see here that it is now the image that I just created where we removed the mountains and the land. So now we need to create the foreground. So I'm going to drag the same image as I had before on the timeline underneath the background image to create the foreground. Make sure that it's selected. I'm going to go back to fix enhance. 
And then once again, I'm going to go to photo director. We want to make sure that we're on the edit tab again, but this time we're going to select background removal. Now we want to make sure that the magic selection tab is selected and we want to select the mountains and the ground. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start grabbing the mountains and the ground. Now, if you make a mistake, you can use the erase tool. And if you want to, you can change the size of the brush if needed. And we want to make sure that remove unselected area is selected. And then we want to go ahead and click on apply. So as you can see, it went ahead and removed the background and now we only have the foreground. If you need to make adjustments, you can select the brush here in the fine tune the edge section and you can go ahead and fine tune and make any adjustment or fixes that you need to make. Now when we're done, we go ahead and click on back to send the image back to power director. And we click on yes to save the edits. So most of the time it's going to put it right in the center of the image. So you may need to left click on it and drag it down. It should lock into the correct position. And now it looks just like the original, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and create some movement. Now we'll start with the background so you can double click on the background to open up the PIP designer, or you can left click it, go to designer, and then go to PIP designer. Now, the first thing that I like to do is make sure that it's set to snap into place and that my grid lines are on. So I'm gonna go down here to the toggle, and I have snap to reference lines, which is all good. And then I'm going to go down to grid lines and under grid lines, I like to select the 10 by 10. Just gives me more reference points to look at. And next I want to make the preview window smaller. So I'm going to click on the minus magnification icon. And the reason why I want to make it smaller is because I want to actually drag out the image to make it bigger. Because if I don't make it bigger, when I create the movement, then there's going to be black that's going to show up on the screen. So I just want the image to always be on the screen. So I need to make the image a little bit bigger. So I'm going to place my playhead over one of these nodes here until I see a diagonal line with two arrows. I'm going to hold down my left mouse. I'm going to drag this out. And that's pretty good there. Next thing I want to do is I want to create some keyframes and some motion. So I want to make sure that my playhead is at the beginning of my timeline here. And I'm going to go up to position and I'm going to click on add a keyframe. Next, I'm going to move my playhead over to the three second mark. And I'm going to Hold down my left mouse over the image when I see the crosshairs with the arrows. And I'm going to drag this over to the right to create the motion. And it should lock into place. And then you see that a keyframe automatically got created here. And this means that it's going to move from the position at this keyframe to the position at this keyframe, which will make it move across the screen. Now I want to create that smooth motion. So I'm going to select ease in. And now I'm going to click on okay. 
So now if I play this back, we should see motion of the clouds going across the screen. Now it's time to move mountains. So to do that, we'll go into the foreground image. Once again, you can double click it. You can go to PIP designer, all that stuff. I'm just going to double click it this time with my left mouse. Now I want to use the minus magnification button again to make the preview screen smaller. I want to make sure that my playhead is at the beginning once again. And I'm going to go to the scale section and I'm going to click on add a keyframe. And then I'm going to move my playhead to three seconds, just like I did on the background image. I want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. And that means that where, whether I move the width or the height, they're going to move together and they're going to maintain the aspect ratio. And for this one, I'm going to move my width up here. And now we have a keyframe here. I'm going to make sure that ease in is selected. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now if we play this back, we should see the clouds move from side to side and the mountains actually get bigger and move towards the screen, creating that 3D kind of effect. So let's see how it looks. Wonderific. I like it. There you have it, people. How to make the parallax effect in Power Directors 17. Don't forget to check out more of my content to learn how to use Power Director. If you decide that you like Power Director 17 and you want to buy it or upgrade to the software, I'll leave some links in the video description that you can use to purchase it. Those are affiliate links. So if you use them, I'll get a small commission, which will help me continue to create content that teaches you how to use Power Director. You'll pay the same price as if you went to the site on your own. So if you want to help me help you use the affiliate link. All right, Power Director peeps. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, Tito Tim's videos. Tito Tim's videos focuses on travel vlogs on his channel. So if you're into travel, you like seeing exotic places, and you want to get down with somebody who knows all those great travel spots, then you need to head over to Tito Tim's videos channel, check out a couple of his videos, and if you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. That way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.